came to Durham originally from New Orleans, and uh, when I came up here, I um, found some old house, yeah, to to live in and renovate because that's what I'd grown up with in New Orleans. And um, when I had the hardest time in the world figuring out um, how Durham uh, was put together and how uh, the houses that were there and weren't there, how they, it had gotten to its current state of being, so I got involved in preservation through that. So. Um, I had worked a little bit with the local preservation organization and um, just felt like they weren't really out there enough in terms of really pushing against demolition and really advocating strongly uh, that uh, each piece of our architectural heritage was precious. Um, so that was the impetus to start. Um, and it really took on a sort of a dual role from that point forward, a kind of an advocacy role. Um, of really um, educating people through a lot of historic photography and a lot of documentation about what has been lost uh, and getting them to see the continuum of preservation and demolition because I, to a great extent there's so many people here that had come from elsewhere they'd say oh we have so many historic buildings and it was getting them to get a sense of well this is the last 20 percent it's the last 15 percent you know we've lost so much that you, you can't look at this as we have an abundance and you can just sort of chop away a few and it'll be fine. One of the ideas I've toyed with is one of the things I'd like to do is I mentioned the great contributions of, you know, readers who tell, you know, bring so much more to the story than I could ever bring because they lived in this spot and they lived in this house and it has a whole, you know, they were, they were there 40 years before I was and actually lived in that building or with that building, really uh, trying to build something that has much more of a user contribution component um, and um, allows somebody to create a, a post about a specific house or a specific spot because I told people I, I, you know, I could be long dead and buried and not have finished uh, cataloging every house or every piece of architecture in Durham or elsewhere. So um, a lot of the, the, the social networking aspect is interesting because one thing uh, I've really uh, focused on trying to do is um, um, geo-referencing um, all the posts well so that they're, they all have coordinates, uh, they all have links to, to Google Maps, and then I have a, a map that basically has push pins for every post so there's a geographic relationship between the posts. And to me, doing that kind of, um, that bringing a user focus into that uh, that network of geographic organization could be really exciting. How did you start using maps, and in what ways do you use them now? What's the purpose in using them? Well, I, I think, I mean, I love maps to begin with, and just that sort of, uh, I guess, I started using them mostly because uh, I, I get such excitement out of um, finding an old map and seeing the geographic evolution of a place. But... I find, you know, that things can be a little bit, particularly when you're dealing with a place that has changed pretty dramatically um, over 50 years, um, where the the signs are are more subtle of what was once there, where you're really picking up on a on a curb cut is all that's left of a, of a house that was once there, or a, you know, there's an old tree, you know, that just it probably wasn't a part of the right of way or a vacant lot. Clearly, someone planted that tree in the in the backyard, and you know, you're you're, you're that's a little beyond maps. But just the, the the signs are so much more subtle. You really have to orient people to the context very well, I think, in order for them to get a good sense of what am I looking at and what is this vacant lot and this old picture. I don't recognize anything in the background of this old picture because it's all gone. So where is this exactly? So I really were have worked hard to try to coordinate maps or, or pieces of maps often and even aerial old aerial photography there's great old aerial photography done by um, the um, uh, blanking on it now but uh, crop farm service uh, farm service administration I think um, uh, to, to basically assess land cover uh, but they have great detailed shots of cities as well and Getting those in, particularly with the, the availability of Google you know, satellite views or Bing satellite views and being able to, to compare side by side and show the evolution of the maps, I think really helps people know where they are when they're looking at the yeah, picture. Is, is, is there some type of pattern that you're going by or is it just something that catches your eye? 
So I definitely try to, at this point, the, the, the evolution from straight advocacy to more architectural record is, has been to be a bit more systematic about it. And, you know, there are, I, I definitely will be uh, very compulsive about um, areas that I know are of great interest to people. And so, um, it, particularly if it's uh, institutional architecture or commercial uh, strip, uh, old downtown, old neighborhood commercial, old schools, you know, these kind of things where I know uh, a large, you know, group of people over who knows how many years have gone through that place and participated or interacted with that place to some degree. I, I'm, I try to essentially go neighborhood by neighborhood and do all of those within the neighborhood. Um, and then, or, you know, neighborhood groceries or a corner store or, you know, something else like that that has particular salience to a large section of the community, it's more public than private uh, in some ways. So um, then the houses are kind of the more challenging piece for me to decide where the line is, you know, because uh, so, you know, I, I'm, I'll, I'll do small houses that are particularly interesting or of a form like a mill house where there's a repetitive form. I'll definitely do big, you know, interesting architectural gingerbready kind of houses and threatened houses and, you know, houses that uh, have any kind of particular interest or historicity, whether it's a historical connection because of a figure that lived there or um, it's, you know, it's position on a street or anything else. But you know, there's just some line there where I can't do every single thing. A little bit about what your plans are uh, for the future of the blog. Is it going to evolve in another way? Are you planning on keeping on, keeping on with what you're doing now? <laughs> well, I, I, I do think there's room for evolution. I, I, I think um, I, there's a sort of a first line evolution of just wanting to make information more accessible because. Uh, it's uh, to, to me, it's it's not really. It's kind of a wasted effort when I have people, you know, email me and say, "I really wish you'd, you know, write about this." And I wrote about it three years ago. Um, so I mean, it's fine, but like that's like if they can't find it easily, then I'm not really accomplishing what I want. Um, so uh, there's just an element of you know really making the use. The, the platform fit the use that I, I, I think needs to happen. But I think there's room. I think we're seeing a real evolution in, in geographic information. Um, say that there's someone else in another community that wants to do something similar to what you're doing with Endangered Durham. Uh, what advice would you have for that person? Um, uh, be crazy. Um, <laughs> no. Be a masochist. <laughs> be a masochist. Um, you know, Jeff, it's like anything else. You've got to you've got to have a passion for it that you know makes you be a masochist to some degree. And you know, uh, it's, it doesn't seem like you're being a masochist. You know, sometimes you realize it, but for the most part, you're doing something you care so deeply about, you love that you're driven to do it. And yeah. there's a legacy at the end of it. And for yeah, your children and you know your community. Right. Right. And you, you, so you can feel you can feel very connected to it and feel that, you know, hopefully you're creating something that, you know, has some permanence in terms of documenting your, your community and your, your community's past. Um, but, you know, what I would say is, you know, it's start from that place, you know, or find the person in your community who, who's there, you know, and who is kind of compulsive enough and, and, and passionate enough that they're willing to really dedicate themselves to it. Um, but if you have that, I mean, the tools, I think some people can focus on the tools not necessarily being out there, but I mean, that's the wonderful thing about using something like a blogger or, you know, whatever platform you want to use, WordPress, TypePad, anything is uh, it's free and it's easy. I, I worry a lot about getting everything perfect and getting everything right and having all my information be completely accurate. And people will inevitably on some posts come along and say, you got this wrong. You know, it's, it's this actually. And, you know, at, at first, when that first happened or first happened a couple of times, I felt really bad, you know, because I felt like I would put this thing out there and I'm, you know, it's wrong, you know, I mean, that's terrible. I'm misrepresenting, you know, the reality. But as I started to realize, like, this, you know, this is not a static thing. I mean, this is an evolution, you know, and, and in as much as people can expand or correct or, 
know, sometimes people correct me and then sometimes somebody will come and correct them back and, you know, and say, actually, he's right. It was, you know, 1945 or whatever, um, that don't be afraid of mistakes and don't be afraid to try doing something like this just because you might not have all the information. I mean, getting just a picture of the place up and saying, I love this house, you know, might be enough to get the conversation started. And there's so much to learn from readers of, of, of your site and or whatever it is that you choose to do that uh, you know you don't necessarily have to have everything you, you just have to present something out there that people want to talk about or want to communicate about and if you do that I mean people people aren't a lot of people are not shy about sharing their opinions about things and uh, you know that's great I mean you know it's it's self-regulating in a way as to you know if, if enough people are contributing as to sort of the, the you can divine kind of where the kind of the truth lies between this rumor and the fact that there was a ghost in the third floor or maybe there wasn't or whatever so um, yeah what I would say is you know um, love it and you know don't be afraid to try it and you know get it out there if you do it once and then don't do it again for three weeks, that's fine. If you do it once, you don't get it right, and somebody says, you know, it actually was this, well, then you've learned something, and that's great, too. So. Right. Well, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Oh, I really appreciate it, Jeff. I enjoyed it a lot. 